It's time for Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Post Game Live is brought to you by Big O Tires. Stop by your locally owned and operated Big O Tires, the team you trust. Now let's join your host, Jason Shepard. Welcome into Cougar Post Game Live, presented by Big O Tires. Go to BigOtires.com and make an appointment at one of 50 locally owned and operated Utah locations. Big O Tires, the team you trust. BYU picks up its first loss of the season. They fall to 2-1 and one on the year with a 41-20 to 20 loss to Oregon in Eugene today. Lots to get to. If there are any post-game comments that come your way over the next couple of segments, we'll get you back up to Eugene for those. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's go over a couple of these stats. And really, I, look, there's a lot of things you can look at, scratch your head. The, the two things that stand out to me, uh, one, we'll put on the, say, the the less than optimal side. The other one, something that really impressed me, and, and the guys were talking about this before, Jaron Hall, 29 of 41, 305 yards, two touchdowns. Jaron Hall was the bright spot in today's loss. And I tweeted out a minute ago, the guy's an absolute warrior. He did not quit uh, from the get-go. When things got bad, he stood in there, did his job, and Jaron Hall was uh, was one of the bright spots for BYU today. On the other side of things, you just the, the rushing yards once again, 212 yards on the ground for Oregon, 61 for BYU. We came into this game knowing how important it was going to be for BYU to be able to run the ball um, and, and that it just never could get anything going. Plus, once BYU got themselves down, it was pretty obvious BYU was going to need to throw the football a lot more. So some of that I will chalk up to you just got down and you couldn't, you didn't have time to run the ball all the time. Uh, but still, you're, you're going to need more than 61 yards per game moving forward. Obviously, Oregon on the ground, not, not just getting you know a couple of yards here or there. They were just getting chunks on the ground, 212 for the game. That's certainly something to uh, try and shore up as BYU moves forward. Up next for BYU, it is a game. The next two games will be at Lavelle Edwards Stadium a week from today. Uh, it will be a late-night kick at Lavelle Edwards Stadium against Wyoming. So bringing back that old uh, whack and Mountain West rivalry between BYU and the Wyoming Cowboys. That will be next Saturday, and then they'll follow that up with a Thursday matchup at home against Utah State. So for the next two weeks, BYU will jump back to the Mountain West for their opponents. All right, we will take a break. When we come back, we'll update you on what's going on in college football. Several final scores from earlier today to update you on, plus a couple of games uh, that uh, are underway and some that are just now kicking off. So we'll get to all that when we come back. BYU falls in Eugene today to Oregon, 41-20. Back for more Cougar Post Game Live, brought to you by Big O Tires, when we return on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now, back to Jason Shepard. This is Cougar Post Game Live, presented by Big O Tires. Welcome back to our BYU Radio Studios in Provo, Utah. Today at Autzen Stadium, it was number 25, Oregon, taking down 12th ranked BYU 41 to 20. Both teams now sit at 2 and 1. Let's update you on action going on in top 25 college football. Two games in the fourth quarter. In fact, this game. Has 30 seconds to go, and Penn State is going to cruise to the win. Uh, they lead at Auburn 41 to 12. Also in the fourth, seven and a half minutes to go. Number two, Alabama up big. In fact, lead by 50 points over Louisiana Monroe. It is 57 to seven in favor of the Crimson Tide. Third quarter action. Number 19, Wake Forest hosting Liberty. It is 20 to 15 in favor of the Demon Deacons. Also, uh, just underway. This one kicked off uh, about 30 seconds ago. Number eight, Oklahoma State already leading Arkansas Pine Bluff. 7-0 in favor of the Cowboys. Missouri State at number 10, Arkansas. Uh, Missouri State will get the ball first, so this game just underway 
in Arkansas. Obviously, the Razorbacks will be in Provo coming up in a few weeks. Also, just underway, number 15, Tennessee, hosting Akron, and Texas Tech at number 16, in C State. Finals from earlier today, number 20, Ole Miss, gets the win at Georgia Tech big, 42 42- Two nothing is the final score. And by the way, that Penn State game has gone final. It is now 41-12, as I mentioned moments ago, a uh, final over Auburn. Elsewhere, number 17, Baylor. The Bears bounce back at home in Waco, taking on Texas Tech. The Bears get the win 42-7. to Number 9, Kentucky defeats Youngstown State 31 to nothing. In Lincoln, Nebraska. They knew that it was going to be an uphill battle today as they try and get things back on track. They were hosting number 6 Oklahoma, and the Sooners went in and did their thing. 49-14 is the final score. Number 4 Michigan gets the win at home as they shut out UConn 59 to nothing. And number 1 Georgia wins at South Carolina 48 48- to seven games that have yet to kick off this game should be getting underway in just a few minutes number three ohio state will be hosting toledo number 11 michigan state will be on the road at washington number 18 florida hosting south florida 23rd ranked pit on the road at western michigan louisiana tech at number five clemson 21st ranked texas will be at home Taking on UTSA, 13th ranked Miami at number 24, Texas A&M. That should be a good one. Texas A&M, you know, looking to uh, get back uh, on track after their loss. Uh, Also, number 14, Utah hosting San Diego State. Let's get you back up to Eugene, the head coach of the Cougars, Kalani Satake, addressing the media. More ready than we did, especially at the beginning. And uh, I didn't have this team ready, so that's that's on me. we got to figure out a way to, to start better, start faster. And um, it just seemed like uh, we just dug ourselves too much in a hole to, to climb out of it. And, and uh, the momentum, all that stuff, that, that's on me and, and the staff, and we'll get this right. But the players, they played their hearts out. They played with great effort. Uh, we, we've got to find ways to take advantage of mismatches on our end and find a way, find a way to, to have better production on the field. And that's in all three phases. So uh, looking forward to getting better and working from it. And, and uh, we'll find out a lot about our team in the next week. Because uh, it's just time to, you know, to basically um, play like we can play and be consistent. And um, just not not really happy with the result. But more than anything, there's just a lapse in in some of the mistakes that we made. That's uncharacteristic of our team. We made a lot of mistakes. But I don't want to take anything away from Oregon. Thought they played a great game. They played exactly like we thought they could. They tons of athleticism and speed on their team and um, great team you know there's they're ranked for a reason and they definitely should climb up the rankings uh we, we even saw that i mentioned this before we saw some of the the, the things that were working well against them in, in the uh the georgia game and uh just for some reason didn't work out their way and for us uh didn't work out our way in a lot of ways here but i um, proud of the guys proud of the way they played and we'll respond better and we'll be better from this so Looking forward to getting learning from this and getting to the next game. So, take any questions you guys have. Was that? Yeah, we just couldn't get off the field. We couldn't. We couldn't do much to them as far as stop stop the run. And um, you know, we were down a couple guys on, on defense, but that's all right. We, we we feel like we have some great depth, and they just couldn't settle in. Like the, the guys um, made a lot of mistakes. You have to give credit to Oregon because they they. Did some things differently on defense, on, on offense, that with using, utilizing their personnel. Did a lot of empty sets. Did they went big and went to a lot of spread sets. So we were ready for that in practice, but uh, it seems like whenever we made a mistake, uh, Bo Nix and the offense capitalized on it. And then if you're just looking at the scheme, that's how it worked. But we were missing tackles, you know, and that's not that's not what we that's not. I, I honestly don't think that's our our type of play. We had a lot of players that were missing tackles, and it was. From top to bottom, it wasn't uh, one person or one position that did it. So um, that, that's my fault. I got to get these guys better. We got to make sure that we focus on the fundamentals of the game. I keep mentioning the fundamentals will be a big, big part of the success for us, and just did not do it well enough on defense. Yeah. Well, that's a concern for me. I just like I, I, you know, you mentioned it that that. Um, I, I don't know what the issue is. Uh, we'll have to keep watching from the film. I, we thought that the uh, defensive front in Baylor did a really good job, and, and um, we thought that we could find some spots against Oregon, and obviously uh, they, they did a good job shutting down the run. And so it made us one-dimensional. 
and uh, put us in some tough situations on third down and even on fourth down, you know, and, and we couldn't even make capitalize and make those plays. So, um, you know, I, I think at the beginning, we just couldn't couldn't punch it in. We couldn't finish drives, and uh, that we'll, we'll, we'll get that fixed. But, uh, yeah, I just – and then, you know, at the end of the game, just we're just trying to get the – to try to get the train back on the tracks, you know, and, and uh, try to do whatever we can to get some uh, positivity from this to show that we're capable of doing some things differently. Um, so we're, we'll have to look at this entire game, and, and we have to get better from it. I, there's no running from it. Well, you mentioned this loss can be attributed to the overall talent on Oregon's roster compared to the talent you have. Yeah, they have great talent. You know, I, I think uh, we have talent as well, but talent does no good if you make mistakes. And if, if we, and I say that, that we made mistakes, but it, it's also coaching. It's not just overall. We did not do a good enough job winning that game. That's from the players to the coaches and everyone involved, including myself as a head coach. So uh, we we didn't seem like we were ready to go from the from the get go, um, and that's that's something that I have to evaluate and something that I have to improve on. And I'm going to do do a better job. I, I have to as a head coach. <coughs> No, I think if the, the goal was to just play great fundamentals on 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 defense and even on offense, and finish blocks and uh, block well on offense, um, take care of the football and defensively, it just seemed like it took us a while to get that going. And and um, you know, I, I think they had a lot of speed and talent and athleticism in their skill position, and made us miss a lot of tackles. I mean, uh, that's uncharacteristic of our defense and our players. And but you're, you're making a lot of people miss, and that. Credit to them; they they utilize their skill really, really well. And I, uh, I thought we could handle the skill and the and the athleticism, but obviously we need to go back and figure some things out and put ourselves in better position to make plays. Yeah, we. I think it was because it was a three score. If you if you talk about two point conversions, um, and thought about it and then we thought okay we can get a stop here we wanted to see if we can we'd have to use the onsides later um they, they just just grinded out the clock it's, it's what we did a lot last year you know and they were able to run the clock out and and not really have to throw the ball much and and um thought thought we could switch some things and maybe get a spark going but uh at, towards the end of, of the game it just seemed like we should do whatever we can to, to salvage getting the guys playing assignment sound football on defense and offense trying to get some positivity but we couldn't even couldn't even generate really great run game even in that in that part of the game, you know. And I, I told Coach Lanning at the end, I apologize for us taking the timeouts even when the game was out of reach. But we're trying to get our things back on track. We're trying to get the team getting the momentum back on our side. Uh, that that's more looking into it for next week than anything else. Yeah, we have to go. Re- eva- everything has to be evaluated for for us, and that's that's a. Uh, I mean. We have to find out what the issues, what the deficiencies were in every in every aspect of our game, whether it's coaching or or um, players, uh, personnel, whatever it is. You know, um, I, I just want to make sure that we get right back to where we can be and, and make sure that we're ready when we get back home for our, our next game. <coughs> yeah, we were. I think we were hopeful that he would go, and then and. I'm um, hoping that, that we can see a lot of improvement from yesterday to today because we saw a lot of improvement along the way. But I think the decision was that we just didn't don't want to put him at, at, at you know at, at risk. Um, so we're hope we're hopeful that this will be hopefully this next week will be time for him to return and maybe time for Gunner. We we need some guys back. Uh, I mean I I saw some good things. I I don't know if. if um, it's difficult to say when we're we're down by so much, you know. When you're looking from the offensive point of view and the defense and special teams, we're just we we're out of it early, and so um, I, I think those guys we feel comfortable with those guys being able to get open and make plays. Um, I think it's hard when you don't establish a run game, and we 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 pride ourselves on the balance of having both. So there's a lot of things to fix on on all three phases, and, and definitely um, looking forward. I mean, they're fixable. You know, there's just we just got to focus on it and, and get it done, and that's my job as head coach. I can't remember. I mean, uh, penalties always hurt, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, when you have a big play and then you have a holding call that brings you back, or 
you have an issue with uh, like offsides giving them free free plays. Well, there's a lot of a lot of issues there, but but uh, for the most part, I thought the refs did a good job. They 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 you know I thought they were communicated really well to us on everything that was happening. So I'm, there's no no excuses with the refs. Everything was fine there. Maybe this is more discipline on our end. <clears throat> All right, guys. Thank you. That was the head coach of the BYU Cougars, Kalani Satake, after BYU falls to Oregon 41-20. to And as you heard, you know, he's obviously frustrated and trying to find answers and says that's really what this week will be all about is trying to evaluate everything, look at everything, find out why this game played out the way it did, try and get better and uh, implement some of, those, uh, some of those things into the game coming up next week, which again is next Saturday night as the Cougars host the Wyoming Cowboys at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Uh, let's just, let me pause real fast. Any other audio? We, any other? I can't hear you. Sorry, a little producing on the air here. All right, let's go ahead and take a quick break. We'll come back and have more post-game reaction from Eugene on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to Greg Rubel. Uh, back at Autzen Stadium here in Eugene, Oregon. Let's head down to the press conference room. Ben Bywater and Jaron Hall at the podium. What type of opportunity? Yeah, no, I, I just think an opportunity to come in and play a great opponent, uh, great home field advantage, a great atmosphere in college football, coming off of two good games. Uh, you know, we had a lot of momentum going, so I thought we were Really, in that in that sense, um, just how we were able to win a gritty game last week would have been a lot for us to come here and get a win in this environment. You know, so um, but it doesn't change anything to do you know, with our conf- our confidence, how we approach next week's game. So you know, we're still the same team that we were two weeks ago and uh, you know, a week ago. So we just gotta gotta learn from today and, and it'd be better. In football, you make mistakes, but it's about how you come back and uh, how you learn from those mistakes. Yeah, it was day to day. Just today, you know, it just wasn't feeling it. So we don't want to put guys out there that aren't ready to go. We're more concerned about their health, them being back at their fullest and trying to force guys in. So when he's ready, he'll be back. Sure. Look like the protection Yeah, no, our, our receivers did a great job. I mean, we had 29 completions, uh, 41 attempts. So that's, I think that's the most completion we've had in quite a few games. So in that aspect, they did a great job. There were a couple plays, you know, they did clamp us down, but that's football. That's the course of the game. Great, great athletes over there. The DBs were, were very good. DB safeties, their backers could move. So, you know, in that sense, uh, we knew we were going up against a great secondary. Uh, we won some, they won some, and uh, just kind of went back and forth. Obviously, yeah. so the Yeah, it's tough. Momentum gives it to them, you know, especially being away in their stadium. Uh, you hate you hate to give up opportunities on fourth downs to turnover. You know, we preach taking care of the ball, ball security. Turnovers, you know, is just as devastating as throwing an interception or fumbling the ball to us. You know, we, we rely a lot on being able to convert fourth downs, giving our defense a break. Uh, we just didn't do that today. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I trust our guys up front. That was a good defensive line. Coach very well, so you know our guys will be they'll be okay. We'll figure out a way to, to get things going there. So there's no no concern for the run game, you know. And, and again, it's, that's not for me to say. Um, you know, I trust our guys, trust Coach Funk, and got play cards to get going. What was the love you had to stay in the game for the entire fourth quarter, having all the starters? What was the love behind that? Yeah, we're playing ball. You know, never take anything for granted. Every play is a blessing. You know, we're grateful to be there. And there was a moment where we had some momentum, and we were down by I think uh, three scores. And there's still you know, 11 minutes left. We scored twice pretty quick, so you know we got some momentum going again. Um, and so that was it. We're not going to finish. We're not going to take people out. We're going to go ahead and finish this game where we started. All right, we'll take questions for Ben now, Jeremy. Yeah. It was. It was. You know, we want to make sure the game is obviously want to win the game, but for us to show resiliency there in that third quarter, get it down to three-score game, big for us, and we're just going to fight to the end. That's the main thing for us as a D, and sticking together and just making sure that, you know, although we are down, you know, we're going to fight to the end. How much did you talk about being down? 
Yeah. Personnel wise, having not having Tyler Earl, Keaton got a little bit nicked up. How, yep. did, that, how did that impact your guys' operation defensively? Those are great players, and obviously we want everybody playing, but it, that's it's it's football, right? Guys are going to go down, guys are going to get nicked up, so. It really is so week to week, and I trust everybody out there. You know, obviously, I want Ty, I want Earl, and I want Keenan full speed. But it's that's just that's just how the game goes, especially against a team like Oregon. They're going to be solid. Guys are going to get hurt. Guys are going to get banged up. But it doesn't change anything for us. You guys got to yourself over here. This is difficult with independence. One loss. Yeah. Yeah. Chin up, chest out. That's for us. It's just hey. Obviously, you got to learn from this loss. You know, take it on the chin, and we're going to move forward. I'm, I'm not too worried about our guys. We're just lick our wounds, and, and we'll be back at it next week. Hey, hey, we just got to get another one. All right, we got to get another one. But I know he, uh, I, I, I caught it, and I'm, I'm looking. I'm like, why is my own guy trying to tackle me? You know, he's running right at me. But I love Logan. I know he was trying to just, you know, block the receiver behind me. But got to get another one. Got to get in the end zone. Appreciate that. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. All right, that is a linebacker Ben Byerwater. We'll continue our postgame coverage. Oregon 41 and BYU 20 here at Otson on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's rejoin Jason Shepard for more Cougar postgame live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. All right, so Jason Shepard's day is done for us postgame. Greg Rubel and Riley Nelson back with you here at Autzen Stadium. Cougar postgame live continues. BYU falls to Oregon by a final score of 41-20 to today. BYU trailed the game uh, 38-7 to before launching a mini comeback in the fourth. Got the game to 38-20, but an eight-and-a-half-minute drive from the Ducks uh, sealed it to 41-20 as your final. BYU got into the red zone at the end of the game but uh, could not convert. BYU ends up two for three in the red zone. Oregon got there seven times and was seven for seven in the red zone today as the Ducks improved to two and one while BYU falls to two and one. Oregon's ranking will improve from 25 and BYU's ranking will drop from 12. And once uh, Bo Nix came back in the game and Dan Lanning may... uh, rethink exactly his plan what to do there in terms of when to bring in the backup quarterback because really the only time when Oregon stalled today was when he pulled Bo Nix early with still four and a half minutes five minutes to go in the third quarter and uh, Ty Thompson did not get the best of cooperation from his teammates they didn't look good for about a 10 minute span Bo came in to kind of seal the deal and that was their best drive of the second half was when Nix came back in and and I mean, you don't want to put it all on Thompson, but he throws a pass backwards that ends up at a 26-yard loss, and then he throws the only interception turnover on the game uh, when he was trying to force the ball over the middle. So, uh, because, l- listen, it wasn't just to let BYU back in the game. Now he's also, you know, there's a significant wound to the confidence of his backup quarterback uh, because, you know, the timing of such um, wasn't in there. But, you know, came away with the win, and that's probably what he'll say is that's the uh, – uh, that's the most important thing, and uh, he'll have to deal with that as he's building his program and developing his players. All right, uh, Greg Grubel and Riley Nelson with you here in the press box, the broadcast booth. Mitchell Jurgens down around the BYU locker room area. Hope to be joined by a BYU player on the headset in short order. BYU at Oregon uh, all time, uh, still just the one win at Autzen Stadium. BYU falls to 1-4. and four. In Eugene, they've only played one time in Provo and won that game back in 1989. BYU did get a $1.1 million paycheck for today's one-off at Autzen Stadium. BYU falls the 20-6 and six under Kalani Sitake when playing as a ranked team. Kalani, as head coach, falls to 50 and 30, 20 games above 500. Morph Motson is coming up after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's rejoin Greg Rubel for more Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Oregon 41, BYU 20, today's final score. Down to the BYU locker room area we go. Leading the Cougs in solo tackles today with five. Five of his seven stops were of the solo variety. Included in those five solo stops, one and a half tackles for loss. He's defensive back Jacob Robinson with Greg Rubel and Riley Nelson here in the broadcast booth. Jacob, thanks for taking a minute. We do appreciate it. Thank you. All right, how did this thing feel kind of from the get-go for you? Uh, Kalani made the comment about feeling like maybe right from the start we weren't quite ready to go. What was the vibe you got? I'm sure you prepared the same way you felt you did for Baylor and USF. Where did it kind of come apart for you guys? 
Um, I think it felt like a, just a normal game, just like Baylor, just like uh, USF. Um, just we're at a stadium with a lot more people than usual, so that was definitely the difference. But What did you feel you could get done defensively that didn't really happen the way you hoped? Uh, we just need to wrap up when we tackle, I think, because everyone's there in the right spots. We just need to wrap up and hold on until our uh, teammates come. Because really, first two games, you hadn't been missing a lot of tackles. You probably saw that on video that you were making pretty clean tackles, right? Uh, I, I think so, yes. <laughs> so, Jacob, not to belabor the point, these backs weren't very big. Uh, so, yeah, But I was surprised to see how strong they were being able to run through arm tackles. Was it their quickness and speed that causes more problems for defenses to tackle them, or was it their strength? I think it was just uh, they just kept their legs moving. Usually uh, people will stop their legs. They were really good at keeping their legs moving. You lose Caleb Hayes early in this game for the game, uh, but yet uh, depth has not been a real issue for you guys at corner. You seem to have uh, you know, some guys that can get in, come in and do the job. Do you feel like Caleb going out meant anything to, to the way you guys played, or, or how do you see that? I think it did a lot. Um, he's, he's a big leader. He'll, he'll give us some insight on a lot that's going on, so... And he's super good at covering, too. So I think that was a big, um, hard thing. Okay. Uh, it's always easier to celebrate a win than have to talk about a loss. But where do you think this team comes out of week three as you, as you get ready for your next two games at home? I think we're just going to have to play even harder than we, we have been these next couple of games. It'll, it'll be good. And you were down a bit, too. I mean, you lose Caleb in the game. You also came in without Tyler and Earl up front. Those are two big bodies that really help you guys against the run, isn't it? Yes, sir. Well, Jacob, uh, thanks for taking a second. Do appreciate it. Uh, safe travels to you and the boys back home, and we'll do this again. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. All right, that's Jacob Robinson, BYU defensive back. Kooks fall to Oregon today by a score of 41-20. to More from Watson Stadium after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's rejoin Greg Rubel for more Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Oregon 41 and BYU 20 is our final score here at a sold-out Autzen Stadium uh, for a second consecutive week. Uh, BYU's run game never really got going. The Cougs end up with a 61 rush yards on 2.5 yards per rush, so two consecutive games at under three yards a rush. And uh, granted, Baylor's and Oregon's defensive lines both are pretty exceptional, some high-caliber players on, on both defensive fronts. But uh, we knew going in that uh, uh, even with Jaron Hall playing well, the Cougs would have to do better on the ground than they did last week, and it didn't turn out that way. They did actually a little worse than they did against Baylor. Yeah, I, I played under Coach Mendenhall, obviously, and I think it was more well-known, but a lot of time has passed since his time at Pro. But it, he was, you know, he would always hammer the three pillars, both to us as the team and that. And the three pillars of a win were turnover margin, uh, the 24-point uh, scoring, you know, 24 Plateau, yeah. Off, yeah, 24. And then the final was 150 yards rushing. If you did all three of those, you'd win pretty much 95-plus percent of your games. If you did two of the three, it was 80-plus. Anyway, it was a bunch of stats. All that's all that to say, Greg. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> forget 150. We, you got to get to the century mark first and, and build up. I, I'm interested to see when we get Coach Satake on with us on air. I would like to ask him why he thinks that is. I know Roderick said during this week that that Baylor front was as good as he's seen as an offensive coordinator. Um, they didn't give any indication coming into this game during their preparation that they thought Oregon was to that same caliber. So I'm curious to see why uh, I, the lack of production again today for a second straight week second half uh, Oregon out possessed BYU by a margin of roughly 19 to 11 minutes it was roughly uh, even at the break and uh, certainly Oregon uh, its best drive and its most time consuming drive uh, came once BYU made it an 18 point game in the fourth quarter and Bo Nix came back in and it was an eight and a half minute drive that helped to seal the deal for the Ducks as they improved the two and one BYU falls two two and one Oregon by the way speaking of the ground game ran for 212 yards 14 carries for Marquis Serving, 13 carries for Whittington. Uh, and uh, Bo Nix himself ran nine times. And nine of his, or rather three of his nine carries ended up in the end zone. A three-touchdown day on the ground and a two-touchdown day throwing it for Bo Nix. The only INT came off the fingertips of uh, Troy Thompson at quarterback. So uh, Bo Nix, who had a few shaky decisions in the first couple games, more so Georgia than the Eastern Washington certainly, played a really clean game today. Uh, had a 212.5 pass efficiency rating and, again, three rushing touchdowns. Uh, 
was so solid at quarterback for Oregon today. It was really good, actually. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to take anything away from him. Five total TDs, right? Uh, uh, those, I, you know, two of those touchdowns were sneaks, and another one was down around the goal line. So he, he was able to um, get, you know, pad some stats uh, on the back of his running backs. But look, when your two primary ball carriers are av- both averaging more than five yards a carry, one averaging almost seven at 6.9, the other one at 5.1, life's pretty easy as not only as an offense, but pretty easy as a quarterback. And, uh, you know, he did what he needed to do. You could see the impact and influence that he has team, obviously, when they took him out and then he came back in. And uh, you said this live on air, Greg. They did everything they needed to do, but also everything they wanted to do when he came back in the game and they needed to uh, run the clock and wanted to run the clock. And sure enough, ate up eight minutes and 33 seconds, uh, capping it off with a field goal that put the game completely out of reach. Okay, including sacks. So this this includes some losses on plays this year. Uh, Jaron Hall's now run the ball 23 times for 62 yards. And that includes some losses on plays. That said, um, you know, 20 yards a game on the ground is not what I would envision Jaron Hall having by the end of this year. And uh, I don't think he's not trying to run. I think teams are doing a really job, of keep, a really good job at keeping him from finding spaces to run. But that's certainly an element of his game that makes him so hard to defend that we really haven't seen in full force yet this season. We saw it early on. We saw it all the way back in 2019, right? If I'm saying right, like against South Florida and some of those others. Um, and uh, it's it's all but disappeared. And uh, I can tell you just from play design and watching film, there are next to zero design QB run plays. There was a couple coming out second. I think they were trying to jumpstart the run game early on in the second half. Um, with a t- I, There were two design QB runs, but we see next to nothing. And then even him when there's green grass to be had on a pass play, and I, look, he's tremendously good at keeping his eyes downfield and making teams hurt there. But sometimes it's like, man, go get eight yards and a new set of downs and go, especially when things are, you know, it's tough sledding and every yard is hard earned. If they're going to give it to you, go take it. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting. Uh, hopefully at some point we get the opportunity to maybe ask him or maybe ask Coach Roderick if that's strategically or if that's just the way the plays have shook out. All right, more coverage from Watson Stadium is coming up. Oregon 41, BYU 20 is our final on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to Greg Rubel. All right, the Cougar Post Game Coaches Show begins now from Watson Stadium. It is brought to you by Larry H. Miller Auto, the Larry H. Miller Cougar Post Game Coaches Show, brought to you by Larry H. Miller Auto. Conveniently located in Provo, Linden, and Orem, Larry H. Miller Auto, driven by you. Before we hear from head coach Kalani Sitake, let's hear from Oregon head coach Dan Lanning. Our broadcast team intern, Colton Potter, got these comments from Coach Lanning a short time ago. Well, that was fun. Um, yeah, appreciate you guys. That was, uh, that was a lot of fun. You know, a special, special crowd. Knew that they were going to come out there and be there for us. You know, I'll say this. It's hard to coach in the third quarter during shout, so i got to figure that out. You know, I thought we stumbled a little bit in the fourth. That being said, we came out to this game and said we want to be the more physical team, I think we were that. You know, we wanted to win critical situations. We were good on fourth down, um, able to stop them and then get ours whenever we had you know opportunities to go for it. Um, we wanted to outrush our opponent. You know, I think that's that's a brand of physicality that we were able to show, um, and then establish an identity. You know, we, I think everybody in the stadium at some point probably realized what we were doing when we ran. You know, Josh Connerly out there, a big group out there with you know. Uh, three tight ends in the back where we were about to get big and go play ball, and we didn't really care if you knew what we were going to do. You had to stop us, and I thought the, um, our offense did a great job of that. Had some big um, defensive stops as well, you know, played contested balls well, and then you know, I thought this was our cleanest game from a special team standpoint. That all being said, there's so much that we can improve on, and we played you know, BYU today, but we also played Oregon, right? And there's a, a lot that we want to finish games. We want to be able to capitalize at the end. I don't know that we did as well there. Uh, at the end as we want to do. So we'll continue to look to go uh, grow. We're about to go play a really good Washington State team. Um, so got to get ready for them. Um, all that being said, appreciate Duck Nation for the job they did today. We'll start on the right right here with Zach. 
Coach Jordan Green's played a really big role for you guys, especially on third and fourth down. What have you seen from him in, in fall camp and kind of leading up to this? It really lets you be confident going into him, to him in those situations. Yeah, we make a lot of those decisions, you know, going into the game based on situations. And I think a lot of the situations you saw Jordan in were third and shorts, fourth and shorts. He's a he's a big back that runs physical, is able to get tough yards. And we had some tough yard situations today where Jordan was able to go have some success. Right here, Eric, on the left. Yeah, we, you know, it's it was uh, a lot of fun for me during this game. We talk about certain situations as a team in front of the entire team. So those decisions are made long away from the field before we ever get out there. Uh, you know, there's one point in the game where Noah Sewell comes up to me and we're on offense. And he says, Coach, why didn't we go for it there? I thought we'd go for it. You know, I said, no, we're taking the points here, right? So our guys understand our mentality and what we're going to do. A lot of those decisions are made before we ever get there. That happens in our staff meeting, in a pregame meeting. Uh, before we ever arrive at that moment. So every one of our coaches had confidence in our players to go execute, and every one of our coach, our players had confidence in the plan. All right, that is uh, Dan Lanning, head coach of the Oregon Ducks. Let's head down now to the Cougar locker room area, and BYU head coach Kalani Sitake is on the headset. It is the Larry H. Miller Cougar Postgame Coaches Show, brought to you by Larry H. Miller Auto. Conveniently located in Provo, Linden, and Orem, Larry H. Miller Auto, driven by you. Kalani with Greg Grubel and Riley Nelson up here in our broadcast booth. Kalani, thank you for uh, the time. Uh, we heard from you in the postgame press conference, but I want to focus on something you said about how the game began. What was the vibe you had in the opening minutes of this game? Well, I thought I thought we were ready to play the game. I, I wasn't. Uh, uh, I, I don't think uh, I was anticipating that happening. I didn't think we were flat. I thought the guys were excited. Uh, from what I saw, it seemed like uh, you know, it just seemed like um, once they got. In a hole, it was hard to get the guys out of it, and that's that's my fault. I I, I don't know uh, all the ins and outs of it, but I got to figure it out, you know. And and uh, the hope was to stay humble and keep working hard, but uh, not not sure if 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 we just thought we would just show up and Oregon would fall apart. You know what I mean? So the, they're too good of a team for us to not be ready and uh, be um, you know just clicking um, all together. I th- I felt like we were we were never doing that and. You have to give Oregon credit. They, they they put us in some tough positions, and, and they made plays, and we couldn't. It just seems like a lot of things went wrong at the worst possible time, and um, I, I have to do a better job of getting these guys ready. <clears throat> Coach, uh, the run game was uh, – it's two weeks in a row where – I think uh, you know both your your players and observing the game it, the hasn't uh, been up to par. What can be done, or you know, from the self scout from last week and what you saw on the field today? What what can be done to kickstart this rushing attack w- uh, that helps your offense so much when it's really rolling? Yeah, I'll, I'll have to watch the film because I, I did not anticipate this happening. I, I don't think um, Oregon did a lot of uh, uh, stunts or or blitzes. I just thought that they. Uh, they just got off some blocks, and, and we couldn't sustain them. And then for some reason, our, our run game just just didn't go. And so, uh, don't know what the situation is there. I got I got to got to evaluate all of it and talk to A Rod and, and Coach Funk and figure out what what we can do better. I, I like that the uh, that they took care of the football, you know. Yep. But, but other than that, it's like uh, it's hard to play football when you're when you're one dimensional, and we we try to. Uh, you know, open up the game with some throws and stuff like that. But if you're all you're doing is throwing the ball, it, and that's because that's the only thing going for you, it's it's pretty easy to stop. If we can stop somebody's run on our defense, then it, then things are go really well for us. Most of your pen, most of your penalties came early too, Kalani. It felt when you were looking for some traction, you guys just weren't clean enough in the earliest part of the game. Yeah, and 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 some errors and, and mistakes, and it's like, uh, you know, just just put ourselves in some really really bad position i mean look at the uh we punted the ball and then we we had a a, a late hit personal foul or whatever it was uh, yeah. on, on the return on a fair catch yeah and it's like um guys just just missing that opportunity but it's, it it wasn't one thing it was just a bunch of one things you know and yeah. and it just seemed like that all just started to pile up against us and then when we could get we, we couldn't get out of the way of, of, of mistakes and then when we finally did the score was out of reach, you know, and, and even then we're like, okay, it's a three score game. Let's get this two point conversion. Let's figure this out and, and try to try to make something of this. And then we couldn't get the ball back. I mean, we didn't get the two point conversion, but we couldn't even get the ball back really with enough time to do some stuff. Um, they ran the clock out. They did. They, and I said it in the post game that they 
they ran the clock out and just basically did what we like to do, which is end the end the game by running the clock out and getting a score. Through the first couple of games, Kalani, you guys were doing a really good job at keeping plays in front of you. Very few long scrimmage plays against you. And today, that's kind of where Oregon got you. They look, they look like a typical Oregon team, and, and chunk yards are one of their specialties today. Yeah, and, and we you know we pride ourselves on not giving up the big plays, and I, I think we just gave up so many big plays. It was, it was uh, you know, runs, runs for more than 10, and, and uh, the throws that were just like, uh, I don't know, just coverage one-on-one coverage we need to find a way to make those plays um the, the guys played hard and and um you know i just don't know if, if they're they're stressing too much or trying to make a play that they're they're actually not utilizing their technique but uh it just seemed like an uh, an incredible amount of missed tackles and i just don't like seeing that i don't, I don't know what the issue is but and it hadn't been an issue through <clears> the first <throat> two weeks kalani you know no. that. and it seemed like we we, we were caught by the with the, the speed and athleticism of their skill positions that we start to leave our feet on our tackles. You had guys diving every which way, and that's from every position, you know. And that's, uh, I think, a combination. It's, it's Oregon has some really good skill, and we were just abandoning our technique. And that's, like I said, that's my job as a coach is to keep reminding them of the fundamentals. That's something that we always talk about over and over and over again, and yet uh, we were we were abandoning it quite a bit in in, in the in this game, and I I don't like seeing that. Coach, I feel like Oregon offensively used tempo really effectively. You know, keeping certain personnel groupings uh, of yours on the field and taking advantage of those, and able to kind of pile up successful play. You know, two or three in a row. How do you prepare against a team that's going to be able to use the tempo of their offense effectively? How do you prepare your defense to be able to uh, stop the bleeding when they get rolling like that? Yeah, the tempo, it, it was more like cr- just keeping the momentum going for them, right? And, and, and um, I, thought they, I thought they did a good job. It's not, it's not out of the ordinary. We've seen it before. Our offense usually does that too. But um, we just couldn't get stops and we couldn't, we couldn't find ways to make plays. And even when we were there to make plays, I mean, it looked like we would get a, a, a tackle on, you know, with a one-yard gain and then it springs out and, and busts for seven yards. That, it's like those, those – that just seemed to happen way too much, and um, I, I've got to figure it out. We've got to figure yeah. it out, but but that's not, that's not our our style of playing. A uh, bright spot on the offensive side of the ball, I thought, was Cody Epps at receiver. He made a couple of you know, made one on the sideline uh, that was a big big third down early on in the game uh, where he contorted his body, and then he does the same thing back on on his touchdown in the end zone. Talk about what you've seen from his as a, as a developing player and his role ongoing or in the future for this offense. Yeah, I thought I thought he made some great plays, and, and uh, you know, we, we feel good about our depth. That we just uh, we knew that certain receivers would, sh- would show up and find a way to make plays. Um, you know, just, we just didn't make enough of it, and it's hard to do that when you don't have a run game, so... Uh, you know, we could, we could open up it a little bit more and, and throw the ball a lot more, but um, it, it's really hard when, you, when you're not having uh, the, the safeties or the backers having to respect the run game. So, but that, but uh, you know, Cody, others stepped up. Cosper had some good plays. Um, Chase has a good play. So we're missing a couple guys, obviously, but um, the guys that filled in weren't the problem. It was it was a lack of execution in in, in all three phases. We'll take a break, come back with some concluding comments from Kalani Sitake, BYU's head coach. It is the Larry H. Miller Auto Cougar Postgame Coach Show. We're live at Autzen Stadium here in Eugene. Ducks 41, Cougs 20 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 4.8 yards per rush and BYU at 2.5 yards per rush. You know, Kalani, that defensively, if you've got a team under three yards of rush, you're in pretty good shape. Well, unfortunately, BYU was the team under three yards per rush on offense today. Yeah, that's that's great defense for them, and, and obviously... Uh, not not good enough for us, and this is two weeks in a row. So we've got to figure that out. And then on on our our defense, we've got to figure out how we tackle better and, and stop the run because that uh, that 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 did not happen today. How close do you think you're going to be uh, on on getting your injured players back? And there were four main ones who didn't play today. That's Gunner and Puka, Earl and and Tyler Batty. Then you lost Caleb Hayes in game. But is it the kind of thing where one week week might be enough for some of these guys, or are they looking a little, little longer term generally? Well, I, I think Batty made the trip, but he wasn't able to go, so I'm hopeful that he will be ready. Um, Earl, uh, we're, we're hopeful that he'll be ready too. It, it just sucks not having two starters on, on, on D-line for you to go, but uh, I thought the other guys could could have filled in right. I mean, I have to watch to see how they how they graded, but um, we have we have good talent on our team. We just it just 
uh, that's that's not the problem. We we, we lacked um, execution, and that's that's on me. I got to figure out a way to get these guys playing better. How about the Gunnar Puka situation? <clears throat> yeah, I think I think they're closer. We'll see. I mean, it's one of those things where I I just don't I don't I don't get it. I'm frustrated with it, but but uh, I got no no other. Um, Recourse. Yeah, I had no other options other than just to plan for the worst and then hope for the best. Coach is a uh, you know former defensive coordinator yourself and someone who's still coaching positions. Uh, the defensive alignment when you're struggling to stop the run, I I know I mean you were throwing everything with the kitchen sink. You had sometimes five down, four down, sometimes three with guys kind of playing around. When you're when you're messing with that front, what are you trying to accomplish as a defensive coordinator? Are you trying to confuse the other thing? Are you trying to gain an advantage from your alignment? Well, what's going on in that chess match there? Well, they did a lot of inter- interior run game, like down zone, you know, the inside zone play, and they were doing a lot of the counter stuff to to com- complement it. Um, and then they were okay with bouncing it outside because because they would they would crack blocks and try to get our corners to tackle. Um, I, I would be really concerned if we didn't have anybody out there making like in in the area. And there's a couple times that happened, and we knew the deficiency, the, the issue was some missed assignments, but. The thing that stands out the most to me is the amount of missed tackles that we had in space, and that that's a problem. And and even even just dripping off of a simple tackle on on a uh, on a screen, I, I can think of one of our linebackers just just it's an easy tackle, make it a three four yard gain, and they punt, and now it becomes you know just kind of dripped off a little bit. So I I just I keep looking at it. It's like okay, we we need to tackle in practice or do something because. This is not going to. This is not going to work well for us to keep tackling like this uh, after this game. Hey, a b- bit of an early reset for you guys, uh, Kalani. Here at the three-game mark, uh, you head back home for back-to-back home games against uh, two Mountain West teams, Wyoming and Utah State. Back-to-back, the Aggies will come when they come. But you get Wyoming, a program you haven't seen for a while at BYU. Yeah, and Craig Bowles is a good coach. He'll have those guys ready. I mean, they they beat Air Force yesterday. Yeah. So, uh, in, a, in a tough game, that's hard to beat Air Force. They're, I think they won 17 to 14. We watched that, so uh, they're a team that's going to try to run the ball on us and open up the pass game with the run, and we have to be ready for that. And if I'm watching this film from in, in Wyoming's perspective, I'm thinking, okay, here we go. Let's run the ball at them and see if we can do what Oregon did. One quick question about Jaron Hall. Uh, he's averaging around 20 rushing yards per game through three games, including losses on sacks and things like that. Is Jaron taking what's being given to him right now, uh, or is there more in the tank that you'd like to or even need to get from Jaron as a threat on the ground right now? I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to look at that and see how much um, when he could have been a threat more uh, on the ground. And um, I don't know. I, I probably have to think about um, maybe a fourth down where I thought he could have kept it, uh, things like that. But but um, hard hard to, to evaluate it until I see the film. Yeah. I just want him to play and make good decisions. Um, and he, had, and, he had, and he had a good day, really, <clears throat> overall. You know, throwing it, he was around 150 on pass efficiency. He'll take that most days. Yeah, but, it's, but sometimes, you know, I'll have to look at it, but the quarterback can really help in the run game and, and help open it up for us as, as an option. So uh, I know A-Rod and those guys will figure it out and get it fixed, but um, just, just it just hurts. It sucks, you know, losing this game. And, and, and um, man, I apologize to the fans because we had a great, great showing today and, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get better. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure of it. Kalani, thank you for the time, and uh, safe travels to you and the guys. We'll see you back in Provo. Thanks, guys. All right, that is Kalani Sitake, BYU head coach. That is our Larry H. Miller Auto Cougar postgame coaches show. We'll uh, chat with Cougar Nation on BYU Creamery, Cougar Nation Now, coming up after this. And so if you want to be a part of the program, you can drop us a note and take our discussion certain directions by uh, giving us your commentary at hashtag BYU. CNN. That's hashtag BYUCNN for Cougar Nation Now. You can also drop us uh, the, the the electronic snail mail, if you will. It's it's email BYU. It's uh, Cougar Nation Now at BYU.edu. Cougar Nation Now, one long word with two ends at the back. Cougar Nation Now at BYU.edu. That's for the email. Otherwise, hashtag BYUCNN on Twitter, or you could tweet right at me at Greg Rubel on Twitter as well to get your comments uh, to us. We'll see where it takes us as we continue from Watson. BYU falls to Oregon by a final score of 41-20 to 20 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're tuned to the BYU Creamery Cougar Nation now. BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. 
be a part of the show by emailing your questions to Cougar Nation now at BYU.edu or tweet your questions to at Greg Rubel using hashtag BYUCNN. Let's head live to the Built Bar broadcast booth and join Riley Nelson, Mitchell Jurgens, and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Back at Odson and Eugene, let us pause just 10 seconds for stations to identify themselves on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Radio on KBYU FM HD2 Provo. You are listening to BYU Football on BYU Radio. Greg Rubel, Riley Nelson in our broadcast booth. Mitchell Jurgens soon to rejoin us. This is BYU Creamery Cougar Nation now brought to you by the BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. Hashtag BYUCNN is how you reach us on Twitter. That's the hashtag BYUCNN. You can also just tweet at Greg Rubel. That will get to us as well. BYU falls to Oregon by a final score today of 41-20. to Last time BYU was here uh, back in 1990, uh, Ty Detmer and the Cougs lost 32-16. to BYU was ranked number four at the time. Oregon was unranked. Today, BYU came in ranked 12th, and Oregon just in the top 25 at number 25. But they were number 25 with some question marks, you know, which was the real Oregon team, the one that just got smoked against Georgia, which it's Georgia, or the team that just obliterated Eastern Washington. A pretty good offense in the FCS ranks last week, 70-14. to 14. And uh, we now have a pretty good answer. And uh, Oregon looks like a worthy uh, top 25 team. And BYU has some work to do to either stay in or get in, back in the top 25 uh, the rest of the way. Uh, Jordan Holt drops an email, Cougar Nation now at BYU.edu. And I'll have to admit right now, I don't know that I can answer this without going quickly to the record book while we're on the air. But the question was, what's the trend of the Cougars losing the game after big wins? Uh, and and uh, getting the 2-0 and for the third straight season was something that hadn't been done since 1967. So let's just, first of all, go to that point, Jordan, and that is opening 2-0 and doesn't seem like a, like a huge deal. Like anybody can schedule a 2-0 and start, right? It would, it would appear. But just getting to 2-0 and in three straight years had never happened, even, even, in the Lavelle, uh, even since Lavelle to now. It happened in 1965, 66, and 67. So BYU was finally 2-0, and just 2-0, and in three straight years. And BYU's still never been 3-0 and in three straight years. Today was the first chance. Today was the chance to make them 3-0 and in three straight years for the first time ever. They opened 9-0 in 2020, 5-0 in 2021, had a chance to go 3-0 and this year. It would have been the first time in BYU football history that a Cougar team had opened 3-0 and in three consecutive seasons. It didn't happen. I guess I'm not answering the question of losing the game after big wins, but the point is even just getting to the kind of start that makes people go, whoa, BYU's back, or BYU's having a great season, or could BYU be something, that's just hard to do. The way BYU's schedule is getting out of September with undefeated records or conversation starters has been difficult to do for history for decades now. So BYU's kind of back where the Cougars you know, tend to be, that is, win some, lose some in the first month of the season, especially in the era of independence. But the challenge is always going to be, Riley, and to address Jordan's question, how does BYU respond to a big win over a top 10 program last week at Lavelle Edwards Stadium on an unforgettable night in Provo? And, and BYU, except for just a small portion of today's game wasn't really in the game today and and so yeah that's it's it's disappointing and it it brings up questions as to how would BYU have competed with a a full complement of players they were missing five starters by the end of the game today you know and in that respect it kind of felt a lot like well last year all over again not just missing guys missing a lot of important guys at the same time and it's just so early in the year for it too I mean, you know, the Gunnar Romney thing, who knows, uh, you know, when he gets on the field this year. And, and you know, Puka, when he got hurt, was saying, oh, I could have come back in that night. Uh, clearly, it's a significant issue. And, and he won't be well maybe this season because he's going to play with something that's still going to be kind of sore. And the position he plays and how he plays it, it's going to be tough for him to stay uh, pristine the rest of the way. So um, it's been difficult. Uh, where BYU should have hoped for, you know, better health in the early part of the season. Even that wasn't accomplished this year, unfortunately. And so uh, yeah, roundabout way of not really truly getting to Jordan's question, but Riley, I'll let you speak, and Mitch is now with us too. Is there something to the fact that the Cougars, after big, big wins, just have a tough time following it up? Uh, I mean, there is a little bit. I Look, Coach Sataki mentioned it. He's like, it's just, he talked about how we missed those two dudes on their 
or uh, the starters on the defensive line. And the other thing is that, I mean, look, BYU is significantly better than Wyoming, but Oregon had a recovery advantage on BYU, who played a game early into Sunday morning, and it was an emotionally draining win and all of that. I, so, it, And here they are again, you know, having to travel up here. Wyoming got a day's jump on them and things like that. But listen, more than anything, you you reminded me that like even the legends, even the great, you know, Ty Detmer, they, they experienced things like this. Coming in here, even worse, right? It was number four to unranked. This was yeah. a 12 to 25 and Ty, and Ty Detmer won the Heisman in that. You had the Heisman Trophy winner on the field for you in that season, and they still experienced a fake similar to this. Like, college football is hard. Wins should never be taken to granted, no matter who the opponent or who the circumstances. And when we are able to uh, be a part of and witness, uh, you know, truly memorable wins like we did last week, they're to be cherished and remembered. Mitchell Jurgens with us from the Cougar locker room area. I go back and, and uh, you know, just anecdotally uh, to Jordan's question about big wins and, and the weeks after, and I'll limit it to the Kalani era because it's not fair to go back to the previous uh, regime. Uh, Kalani's first game, just taken over. Uh, they, they get the game winner from Jake Oldroyd, that dramatic finish in Glendale. They win 18-16 to 16. the next week. It was a loss at Utah by a point, 20-19. Uh, to 19. Uh, They beat Mississippi State in overtime, two overtimes in Provo, back-to-back-to-back wins, Toledo, Michigan State, Mississippi State riding a high. Next week, Boise State beats BYU again. It's a one-point loss, 28-27. Uh, to 27. Uh, The 2017 season, nothing memorable there. Uh, the 2018 season, they open it with a win at Arizona. Big night, a nice kick to start the season. Uh, the next week, it's a home loss to Cal by three points there, uh, 21 to 18. Beat, Camp Ra- beat Wisconsin at Camp Randall, number six Wisconsin. The next FBS team they play is Washington and lose that one big in Seattle, 35 to 7. Um, let's see, go to 2019. You have the USC followed up by Washington. Right, USC, you beat them in Provo, 30 to 27, primetime afternoon game. Next week is Washington again. Can I tell you the common thread? 45 19. Pac 12? Or what? Oh, no, playing. Good teams. After you play a yeah, good team, my goodness! <laughs> like you know, without Washington, they weren't dropping. They weren't dropping games to where you're like, holy cow! There was no way that I envisioned. And, and how'd you lose that game? Yeah, how'd you lose that game? And. Oregon was a Vegas favorite coming into this game. So as much as it stings, you're providing some valuable context. Yeah. I mean, not just for the listeners, but, but they're, for But they're too. good teams. Yeah. Well, um, it's, it's also good teams. You're playing good teams in very tough environments. And, that's, and I think that was a big shocker here. I mean, one of my, I guess, key takeaways is, I mean, it was loud down there. I think this was... Uh, this was definitely an environment that BYU, at least this season, they hadn't seen before when they played USF as an away team. It didn't have the noise. It didn't have the energy that um, that you know was felt in today's game. And, and the moment just it seemed like it got too big for a lot of these players. Um, and, and one of the big takeaways that I've um, also kind of came, came away with, and Kalani mentioned this briefly, they got into a hole, and and I think in a common theme is you have these big wins, and then you get to these these tough matchups the following weeks, and and coming off of a high, I think the team comes out expecting not for Oregon to score in four plays that was fast, um, it was quick. It was, I mean, holy cow! Like this team's this team's here to play, and I think that just, I mean, and Coach said it. He's he's got to figure out how to how to get these guys mentally prepared for. If, if a start happens like that, you, you can't get thrown off. You've got to get back quick because from that moment, it seemed like, wow, this is going to be a tough mountain to climb, and then not everybody got on board. And that was, I think that was tough. Another thing is, and BYU was used to this back when they were, you know, reigning supreme in the WAC and the Mountain West, is getting everybody's best shot. When you win a big game like BYU did, all of a sudden you think. You you bet you better believe that Oregon prepared more intensely and more thoroughly for this game with BYU coming off that Baylor win. So that's kind of the not only are you more drained, but you've put the your next week's opponent on a high alert. And it, I mean, it's just hard. Uh, before the break, uh, we had a number of tweets come in asking about the smooth snap rule, not a smooth snap penalty. There were two of them today, right? Two illegal snap penalties. And I'll, and I'll read you the rules from the rule book that reference the snapper and or what the snapper can or cannot do. Um, the snapper may not lift the ball, move it beyond the neutral zone, or simulate the start of a play. He may take his hand off the ball, but only if it does not simulate the start of a play. 
and that the snapper may not shift or move the ball, move thumb or fingers, flex elbows, jerk the head, or dip the shoulders or buttocks. Yes, the word buttocks is in the rule book. So there you go. Those are some of the things that do create an illegal snap uh, or not a smooth snap. And, uh, and, and, uh, and there's also a portion of the rule book that talks about the, uh, the, the snap happening in a smooth, continuous motion. And uh, if that is not done, uh, that can be whistled uh, and flagged as an illegal snap, which we saw today as well. So there you go. Illegal snap. It happens. It happened. We'll take a break. BYU falls to Oregon. Final score 41 to 20. Hashtag BYUCNN on Twitter. That's hashtag BYUCNN to reach us. You can also email us CougarNation now at BYU.edu. This is BYU Football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Nation now on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, so welcome back to Autzen Stadium in Eugene, Oregon. BYU falls to Oregon by a final score of 41-20. to 20. It's BYU Creamery, Cougar Nation now. Uh, do you guys want some more, um, some more rules on smooth and continuous snaps? Uh, sure you do. Uh, just finishing up the thoughts on, on why those were illegal snaps, because this is important stuff. Uh, legally snapping the ball is handing or passing it backward from its position on the ground with a quick and continuous motion of the hand or hands, the ball actually leaving the hand or hands in this motion. All right, so so the words smooth and continuous are important here. All right, so uh, the snap need not be between the snapper's legs, but to be legal, it must be a quick and continuous backward motion. That's that's all we can say more about uh, the illegal snap and or smooth snap rules. All right, to Scott on uh, the email, Cougar Nation now at byu.edu says, don't sleep on Wyoming's defense next week. They held Air Force to under 200 yards rushing. Mm. That was an interesting game. Uh, more, or, more Oregon was away. Yeah, or, Oregon was up 10 nothing at, uh, rather, Wyoming was up 10 nothing at halftime, went down 14 10, won the game 17 to 14 last week. So that was, uh, that, or last night, I should say, and that game was, uh, was in Laramie. And BYU. Wyoming is the next game for the Cougs. It is coming up on Saturday night. Uh, Will on the Twitter, hashtag BYUCNN, he says, what's the trend with the offensive line on run plays? There are a few open holes. It seems like their heads are down blocking and missing assignments. Coming into the season, the O-line was going to be uh, the, the strength of this team. And against two very good defensive fronts, Baylor and Oregon, the Cougs have had a tough time uh, popping holes open for Chris Brooks, who had nothing but uh, clear sailing along with Lopini Katoa and Jackson McChesney against USF. Uh, the caliber is clear in its separation. That said, um, what do you guys see uh, from, from run line push or lack thereof right now for BYU? I mentioned it. The uh, I've talked about this a little bit. Tyler Algier was a wide zone runner and extremely effective. At, well, let me pause there and say that it's not all on the whole line. Like an NFL an NFL draft pick, like we're trying to replace. Right, that's hard. And we're only three games into trying to replace him. So, you know, we're not uh, the the rhythm is is not there in lockstep. But a lot more wide zone. So these guys got a ton of reps last year at wide zone. It's becoming apparent that Chris Brooks is more of a downhill runner. So they're running a little bit more power, man based run schemes. And uh, it just it just doesn't seem to be there. But um, to me, I think that's it. I think they're switching from a team that truly I it, I don't have the exact numbers on this, but I, if I had to guess, eighty percent of their run plays were wide zone last year, and this year it's far less than that. They're kind of mixing up uh, a mix between ISO power, uh, wide zone, and inside zone, and uh, they're just not executing as as high in, as at. At as high a level. You got it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think Riley, you might have even mentioned this during the broadcast today. Um, it, it's not that there's the holes are just not existent, um, and and whether it's because when you look at a, a defensive front, right, there's the front seven. Um, th- there seems to be a, a few holes, but what what I've noticed, at least in in the last two weeks, is um, the the linebackers uh, for today, the linebackers last week um, against Baylor, they're closing in on those holes really aggressively. And, and whether we just don't, and, and yeah, it's a wide zone. It's we don't have a lead blocker taking on. Um, you know, we're not running too many powers between the tackles, and so you don't have you don't have that second level blocker. And, and, and at that point, you hope the running back, you know, Chris Brooks or Lopini, can make a guy miss a first guy miss to then get to the second level. But um, the opposing defenses have showed just a great 
great display and ability to tackle, um, you know, one on one when it makes sense when when there are those small holes. So it, it's been a tough it's been a tough ride for BYU and, and and hopefully they can get back to that week one performance against USF and 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 show some dominance on the ground. Hashtag BYUCNN on Twitter. And a couple of more thoughts uh, building on that previous uh, contribution from one of our listeners. All too often it seems the Cougs can't handle success when any press builds. They have a terrible day like this. Why do you think that is the case? That is an interesting <laughs> question. I, I, I had, they had to be aware of it. The, the question about being humbled and, and the coach is saying on Monday after the Baylor when we showed them so many mistakes that were made, they, they shouldn't have been too excited because we showed them how much had to be changed or fixed or, or corrected. Um, but, yeah, it, it is kind of sometimes frustrating when you feel like the, the momentum is out there, everyone wants to embrace you and put you in the conversation, and then, you know, a dud pops up, and you kind of fall back and slip back, and, and everyone goes, well, I guess, I guess well, that, 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 that's it for BYU for now, and, and, you know, get back with us when you won a few more games in a row. So it's unfortunate. Great opportunity today. Uh, they would have gone into the stratosphere in terms of postseason conversation with a win today, but they really weren't in the game. Greg, you said it on air. Twenty, so, so we were twenty and five coming into this game. Twenty and six under Kalani as as a ranked team. Like yeah. they do plenty of winning as a ranked team. And here's yeah. here's what he's here's the essence of his tweet is it's. It's the emotion attached with these big losses that make them stand out more in your memory, and it erases you. I bet he, I bet our fans remember every one of those six, and probably don't remember a lot of those twenty. So, it's just, uh, it's just the nature of the beast. Yeah, the more heightened your emotions, the more vivid the memory, and uh, that's what we're dealing with. And I think every fan base has to. Here's a funny note: uh, BYU's won its last ten night games, and mm-hmm. what's the common thread in each of their last four losses? Day games. Day games. Boise, afternoon, Baylor, afternoon, UAB, afternoon, Oregon, afternoon. Those are the last four losses over the last two seasons. The sunshine. The Cougars are uh, they're vampires. Yeah, we are. When it comes to, when it comes to daytime football. So, hashtag BYUCNN. Uh, Chris notes the, uh, uh, the big gains of Christopher Brooks nullified by penalties. He said they were first-half momentum killers, the penalties, that is. And that's true. Uh, they didn't end up with a huge number of penalties, seven, but I think five came in the first half. It just felt when this was still a game, BYU really hurt itself with just the sloppiness errors that uh, weren't a big issue uh, through the first couple of weeks. And uh, in, in, in a game like this where Oregon was kind of doing whatever it wanted to, scoring on every possession of the first half, had to be a little bit cleaner. Uh, Brian uh, notes on hashtag BYUCNN, you said he felt the biggest momentum shift was actually the missed field goal. Felt that the air came out of the team at that point. And uh, Ed Lamb said on Coordinator's Corner this past week that every week is a competition for the kicking job, but that might get a little more intense uh, with Justin Smith and uh, Jake Oldred this week as Jake is now in a rut. Uh, he's missed three consecutive field goals, the two last week and the one today, all makeable, all under 40 yards, kicks you got to make. And the weird thing about it, or the concerning thing about it, is it was a left miss, a, left miss, a middle miss, and a right miss. So each hash mark and between, uh, and, and they were pulled two left and one right. Uh, really, no rhyme, no reason to those misses, and so, and and I made, I think I said this maybe off the air uh, to, to to Riley, Jake earlier in his career had more of a thump off his foot. He was not just a good kicker, an accurate kicker. He was a distance kicker. You felt like he could go deep at any time. And right now, it feels like his kicks are just enough to get there, and, and more spin than than thump than distance. And I'm curious to know just how he does feel physically in terms of strength in getting a ball where it needs to go deep that way. Well, and, uh, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's an issue of strength because if you notice, like when he when he warms up before the games. He's kicking 60-yard field goals. So it's uh, still there. And so the, the leg is there. The strength is there. Kicking is a 100% mental. And, and, and you look at, so, you know, um, going back to last week, his two misses were pulls. He pulled them left. Today his miss was, was a push right. A push right. And, it, you know, when you, when he gets into the field, I'm sure in that situation, he's like, look, I cannot pull this kick again. Mm. He overcorrects. He pushes it right. And it's not, it's not an issue of whether he has a leg or not. And, and part of that, too, when you're, when you're – and I'm assuming I'm not a kicker, but I would imagine – if you're just trying, you're playing target, you know, target kicking here, and it's like, look, I can take a little bit off. I just got to put it through the uprights. But sometimes it happens with me. I mean, my, golfing my golf guy. I was yep. going to say that it happens with me in my golf game. If I'm if I'm on the tee box and I'm I'm worried about hitting a drive down the middle, and I start to take more off. For me, it has a yep. reverse effect. I start spraying them all over the place, and you just got to get up there and swing. And 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 I'm I'm assuming that's that's a a comparable as a, as a kicker as well. You got to go up there and have the confidence because a, a confident kicker is a very dangerous kicker and right now it just it's very evident that Jake doesn't have the confidence. 
It happens with QBs. Uh, we call it you, you get caught guiding the football rather than just throwing it. You just got to clear your head and let it rip. We'll take a break, and as we do, let's give you a trivia question for two half gallons of famous BYU Creamery ice cream. The first correct answer with the hashtag BYUCNN will win two half gallons of famous BYU Creamery ice cream. A couple of important things here. You have to use the hashtag BYUCNN, and it's the first correct answer with that hashtag to cross my timeline that will be the winner in this case. And if you've won before, you can still win again. But if you've won already this season, we may use uh, the executive privilege we have to go to the next correct winner if you've already won this season. But if you won in previous years, just keep on winning. It's okay. All right? Those are the ground rules that I've just made up on the spot. Here we go. (laughs) Hashtag BYUCNN. And the question is, how many consecutive wins is BYU's current winning streak over the University of Wyoming? BYU and Wyoming next Saturday in Provo. How many consecutive wins is the win streak that BYU currently has against the University of Wyoming? First correct answer with hashtag BYUCNN wins two half gallons of famous creamery ice cream. It is BYU Creamery, Cougar Nation now. Hashtag BYUCNN on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's get you back to Cougar Nation now. On the new skin, BYU Sports Network. All right, so welcome back to Oxford Stadium, Eugene, Oregon. We have a correct answer in our skill testing trivia contest for two half gallons of famous creamery ice cream. Dustin Ivers is the first in on my timeline using the hashtag BYUCNN with the correct answer to the question, which was, how many consecutive wins is BYU's current win streak over the University of Wyoming? And Dustin said correctly, eight. Eight consecutive wins over Wyoming, dating back to a loss in Laramie in the year 2003. BYU lost 13-10 to in Laramie under head coach Gary Croton. Since that time, BYU's won eight consecutive against the Cowboys, including the Poinsettia Bowl win in 2016. That's the last time they met. So seven consecutive regular season wins, one postseason win, a streak of eight. As for home games... BYU has won nine straight home games over Wyoming, dating back to a loss in 1987. 1987, which is 25 years ago, BYU lost 29-27 to the Pokes, so it has been a quarter century since Wyoming last beat the Cougs in Provo, and the Cougs will be in Provo next Saturday night. It is BYU and Wyoming, our next football game on the new skin BYU Sports Network, and that game will kick at 8.15, which will be around 8.20 or 8.25 Mountain Time on ESPN or ESPN2. BYU will come in with a record of 2-1 and one after today's 40-21 to 21 loss to the University of Oregon. So, gentlemen, uh, Riley and Mitchell, time for a reset, and, uh, and the Cougs will try and uh, get back on the winning track. Back-to-back home games coming up. The first regular season meeting with Wyoming since the Cougars left the Mountain West, and then a weeknight Mountain West game against in-state rivals uh, Utah State. And who knows how frequent the Utah State games will be moving forward. Uh, you know, football, even basketball is not playing Utah State this year. And so we'll, we'll see uh, how BYU-Utah State continue as in-state rivals to move forward, but they'll get the Aggies in two weeks with Wyoming uh, coming up next week. Maybe closing thoughts from uh, both guys before we wrap it up here. And Mitch, I don't want to tax your voice too much. You've had a rough couple of weeks <laughs> just trying to get totally well, but you sound better today than last week. But uh, I think it'll be another good week off for you just before we have to talk again on the air. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, <clears throat> as I clear my throat here. Um, <laughs> no, it's uh, kind of my concluding thoughts here. Uh, one of the things... As we look at this game, and, and I hope, and, and I'm sure Kalani is going to address this as part of it, um, the mental mistakes, right? If you're going to win, and, and when you look at USF and Baylor, the, the mental mistakes really weren't there. If there were a few, it's, it's, it's hard to even pick them out. But today, I mean, there were a number of circumstances. I think there was one where um, Oregon had a third and 16. There was a, uh, an offsides on our side to bump them up to third and 11 or third and 12 or whatever it was. And those are the types of things, like in that situation, in those moments, um, those things cannot happen. But as, as uh, you know, these, these mental mistakes started to snowball, this is not a reflection of what 
the BYU football program wants to be and and I'm sure that's going to be you know one of the top priorities for Kalani to fix and and head into this home streak against very winnable programs um, and and you can get back on track with some wins and, and and kind of build that confidence up so the talent is there we've seen it um, everybody knows I mean the, you know BYU can come out and win football games and it's just going to take a mental reset um, let let people get get uh, get healthy again it's going to be great when the time comes to get Gunner and Puka back in the lineup to mm. provide that spark because because they are they're, they're spark um, spark plugs for the BYU offense and 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 would love to see those guys back on the field to make a big play and swing momentum back in BYU's favor good job Mitch Riley yeah, just even zoom out even further, 30,000 foot view, to be able to build the program to a place to where you can, uh, you know, perform and perform assertively in back to back weeks like BYU's experience takes years and years of. Uh, of recruiting and money invested in the program and consistency in coaching and uh, quite frankly a lot of good luck and the reality is there's only a handful of programs year in year out that could weather you know the type of schedule that BYU's got in front of it I think they're doing pretty well keep perspective both historical and ongoing and uh, excited to see this particular team how how they respond to their first dose of, of adversity in this young season and we'll see that next Saturday night as the Cougars welcome the Wyoming Cowboys to Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Let's thank our crew for getting us and keeping us on the air today. Back at BYU Radio, our engineer, Barry Squires. Our control board operators, Adam Woodall and Corbin Radford. Our coordinating producer, Terry South. Our broadcast intern, Amy Harris. And, of course, our studio host, Jason Shepard. We appreciate Sean O'Neill and Clark Jackman on the management and operations side at BYU Radio and Casey Stoffer in the athletics administration side. And then here at Autzen Stadium, our engineer, Michael Wimmer, with assistance from Clark Jackman, our broadcast intern, Colton Potter, our spotter, Jake Murphy, our statsman, Ralph Sokolowski, and for the gentleman to my far left, Riley Nelson, and to my near left, Mitchell Jurgens. my name is Greg Grubel, thanking you all for tuning in. Final score is Oregon 41 and BYU 20. So in the meantime and in between time, this has been BYU Football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Good day and so long from Autzen Stadium, Eugene, Oregon. You have been listening to live coverage of BYU football on the new skid, BYU Sports Network. Coverage of today's game has been brought to you by All Pro Capital Real Estate Investments, by Les Olson IoT, your office technology partner, by Valhalla Fiduciary, expertise and independence in hedge funds. Also brought to you by Smith's Food and Drug. Get double fuel points and free grocery delivery with a boost by Smith's Rewards membership. BYU Football is a production of BYU Athletics in association with BYU Broadcasting. Special thanks to BYU President Kevin Worthen, Vice President Keith Vorkink, Athletic Director Tom Homo, and Associate Athletic Director of Corporate Sponsorships, Casey Stoffer. BYU Football is an exclusive presentation of the new skin, BYU Sports Network.